Let's say that I haven't had a few sightings. I have probably had too many. I think I've had at least over 200 sightings. The object continued to fly over the whole field. It went back and forth, approaching and moving away from us. I was asked to make a comparison with what I had seen on a material level to represent it with objects. Here you can see what it was that I saw. That I saw from, from the plane window. And this was flying over the object. It is impossible for us to count on two hands all the close encounters that have occurred throughout human history. And nor can we fully ascertain the existence of aliens. Yet the further we go forward in time, the increasing number of these out-of-the-ordinary events seems to veer towards them actually being an effective reality. But what is reality? Reality is a concept that dissolves the moment you try to define it with words. Objective reality, on the other hand, is an oxymoron. Reality is objective. We humans rarely are. The increasing number of incidents is objective. The existence of aliens is still an enigma to be solved. The human being, susceptible by nature to every mystery that surrounds him, justifies almost daily the impossibility of knowing and understanding with certainty everything that surrounds him. Facing the entirety and vastness of space, only the infinitesimal proportions of our own bodies remain a certainty. But the mystery that surrounds the different stories of the witnesses seem more often than not to contain elements in common, which, albeit small, transpire from their words. Telepathic messages, sensations perceived and often determined by the type of flying object sighted, the thought that these entities are also following father-son generations at a family level. We have therefore decided to perform a small yet difficult piece of research. Comparing the testimonies of some eyewitnesses to understand what happened, how they felt and what impact these encounters had on their lives. The protagonists of our story are two eyewitnesses of sightings, Stefania and Antonio, and Ivona, a woman who claims to have been abducted. Stefania, with a dreamy and at the same time analytical personality, has had only one eyewitness experience. Antonio, a man of strong principles and tied to family values, tells of his constant sighting experiences. Ivona, who offers a partial testimony and decides to remain anonymous due to terrible experiences of the past, tells us of a situation where time would seem to be something that can be manipulated and controlled by extraterrestrials. The truth, synonymous with reality, is in front of our eyes. It is just that very often we are unable to see it. They are not entities in general that we see directly in the material sphere. Most of the experiences tell this. But it would seem that there are contacts through dreams, through the dream world. The first time I heard about extraterrestrials, I don't know where exactly, but at the age of about four or five, I was aware of that reality. In fact, at that age of more or less, about four or five years old, I often stood by my bedroom window with the hope of seeing a flying saucer, an extraterrestrial. I don't know exactly the first time when and where I heard about these entities. 
Even my parents said the things I used to say to them seemed quite strange. Sometimes I perceive, uh, it's not that I perceive, not that I suffer from telepathy, on the contrary, that would be something that would scare me a lot, so I hope not. But sometimes I happen to hear some vibrations, some particular noises, like as if there were crickets, but they aren't crickets though, just to explain myself better. And after that, it never happened that I didn't manage to film, or that there wasn't a sighting, ever. My first experience happened in uh, 2015. One night, uh, I had gone out late, in my car, and I returned home around 5 in the morning. After returning home, I remembered that I had forgotten my cell phone in the car. Going out to get my cell phone, I looked up in the sky and I realized that there was a strong source of light. Something that... something that wasn't familiar at all. So I decided to go and film it on the terrace. And up there, I saw that this object was pretty big. It was rotating. There were a few sightings where I... I don't know, I, I felt like something was going to happen. And after a few seconds, it did. The following day, I had the same feeling, and the object passed over me again, but I wasn't lucky enough to film it this time. It has also happened that I've had sightings where there were my friends and family members who witnessed it too, and I had already foreseen that some sightings could have taken place, as I'm now quite used to them. In short, I spend many, many hours making video recordings, studying the topic, and most of the time I can understand that soon there may be a sighting, as has already happened, as I've said many times. As far as ufology is concerned, the first experience I had dates back to a few years ago. And the only thing is that I question the fact that there have been many previous contacts, even without my knowledge, directly with alien entities. Let's start, first of all, from the beginning of my journey, because it was a very, very strange experience. I lived it in a very ambiguous and very strange way, in the sense that, in that period of time in my life, I was having a sort of decline. However, we wanted to visit a friend of ours in Germany. I got everything organized, I said to myself, I'm going to take my camera. But I felt an energy inside, something strange. I felt like I was enveloped in some sort of bubble in, of peace. That I was myself, yet enveloped in this energy. Sometimes I would ask my mother why I was born here and I didn't feel comfortable in this dimension, and I told her I wanted to go home. My mother didn't understand my question, the concept of home. I wasn't referring to home as a structure made of bricks, walls and windows, but of a dimension, a different world. My first experience happened in Poland in 1978, in June, towards the end of the month. On the way back, I was at the airport and decided to take my camera on board, even though I wasn't actually allowed to. I managed to bring the camera on board the aircraft and everything around me was quiet, very relaxing. In a certain sense, it was a relaxing journey. There were no problems from any point of view during the trip or people around me who had any type of frenetic behavior. We can put it this way, which in any case is the common life of each of us. We are frenetic and usually make lots of noise. At one point, 
I don't know why I felt the impulse, the instinct, that I had to look out of the window. After two or three days, this feeling, uh, it, it came back to me. So I set up a tripod with the camera in a fixed position on top of it. It was mm, four in the morning and I also wrote an email. I had sent an email to another of my own emails where I wrote all of this down. Um, also so I wouldn't be considered crazy because it's rightly legitimate if someone thinks you are crazy about all this. But that's not the case. As I was saying, I have proof that I think few have. There are my videos. In 1978, my mum worked in a school as a kindergarten principal. She worked in another town, so she took me with her every day. And up until that year, I would go to the school in a small village called Zawada. After school, I used to have lunch in the canteen and then I'd start doing my homework in my mum's office. I had a friend named Mariusz, which in Italian responds to Mario. His mum worked there as a kindergarten teacher. Mariusz and I were inseparable. We had always played together since kindergarten. We were in the same class in elementary school. One beautiful sunny day, Mario suggested that I go to his grandmother's garden to pick wild strawberries because he knew I liked them so much. Our mothers agreed to us going. All those years ago, there wasn't so many dangers. And in that small town, everyone knew each other. After school, after having lunch around 2 p.m., we went to his house. My friend decided to change route. Instead of taking the wide, paved main road, all paved, he convinced me to take a shortcut. So he took me through the fields. Next to me, the person I was traveling with was sleeping, had fallen asleep. But I looked out from this window and started seeing some high-flying birds. I asked myself, why were they there? Why were those birds there? For some strange reason, I thought they were albatrosses. But what were albatrosses doing, for example, in the Black Forest on the German border? There was no reason why those animals would have been there, provided they were animals, because personally, I also questioned this possibility. At 4 a.m. in the morning, still nothing had happened. Then, as I was just getting up from my chair, uh, the moment I got up, the object uh, passes over me. It was uh, a big object. It was like a, a green lead light with um, an ovoid shape, also with some kind of um, firelight inside, something like that. I don't know if it was a comet, though, because I'm not, uh, I'm not an expert in the field. It not only left a trail, it left like uh, glittering dust, bubbles, as if it were like water full of lead lights inside. It was something I had honestly never seen before. Even in those circumstances, it was beautiful. But at the same time, I was also a little scared because it was, it was quite big. In fact, uh, it was huge. The object continued to fly over the whole field. It went back and forth, approaching and moving away from us. Regarding its dimensions, I, I don't know its dimensions. I, I can't quantify them. Uh, I can't quantify them because, because I like to be truthful. And we need to talk about what we know, not what we don't know. I could make up the dimensions, but I never will. What I know, which is within my capabilities, which I have managed to see, to know, to discover, to film, is what I've just told you. For the rest, I can't say an object is 10 meters long. It could be 100 meters, it could be 200 meters. Of course, sometimes they're far away, so we can assume that they aren't small objects. 
what I saw a few moments later, following the trajectory of these of, of these of these beings, amidst these clouds that we were flying through in the plane, I began to see an object forming very, very close to us. And it was a sort of cube-shaped spaceship. A cube with reflective surfaces. So this is also a very ambiguous fact because I saw them in the reflective surfaces, but they didn't have a shiny surface. It was an opaque surface. I had the impression it was an opaque surface. What mirror has an opaque surface? None. And so I also questioned whether they were mirrors and I asked myself, couldn't they be screens for example? So I started to see this object take on a form which was really huge, mammoth, compared to the size of the plane following the flight of these animals. I realized that some of them were going to crash into it, as if the object were materializing under my own eyes. And these birds, when I put the situation more into focus, I realized that they were circling around the object, almost as if they were following some sort of magnetic field. as if they were attracted by the object. And they drew a sort of sphere, a globe-shaped trajectory. The weirdest thing about this spaceship is that it reflected everything around it, except us, because we passed over it and the plane wasn't reflected. Only the clouds and the surrounding environment that interested it was reflected almost as if it was a decision to exclude or not the objects flying around it in the reflection. So it means that there is an intelligence behind it. There is something that knows very well how to blend in the best way possible that's not to be observed. If it, and if it materializes, it because its wishes to do so. We ran with all our strength as fast as we could But unfortunately, Marius tripped on the freshly ploughed clods of loose earth. I had already passed him. And I kept running. While he remained behind, and he was crying and he begged me to go back. Not to abandon him. Not to leave him there alone. Let's say that I haven't had a few sightings. I have probably had too many. I think I've had at least over 200 sightings. Of 250 sightings, I would remove 50, at least 50, because as I explained at the beginning, they could be birds or, or planes. Sometimes these two can get confused, although it's hard to get them confused. You can get confused more with birds, but not with planes. Because, as I explained before, planes, let's face it, are required by law to have positional lights. Among other things, they are also coloured. In short, there are usually three coloured lights. But if they don't have coloured lights, at least they have to have a white light. Then, if that were telepathy, also the fact that I felt a sort of sphere of peace. Let's put it that way. Because I felt very calm. Just when I was observing that thing there. It's not that I was paranoid or agitated, and there are many, some testimonials from people who say that. At the time these encounters occur, they don't feel this feeling of agitation. On the contrary, they feel calm. So they could do anything. That is, they could react in any way, and you'd be calm. To tell you the truth, I was more agitated by the fact that I couldn't focus on the object with my camera, because I tried to take pictures of the spaceship several times. But I didn't succeed. I tried three to four times to focus, three to four times to take the photo, but the camera was a bridge. It went out of focus automatically and it wouldn't take the picture. 
Could it also be that I got paranoid when I wanted to film that moment? No. However, the moment I observed, I analysed the situation, I felt completely calm. Indeed, more than I usually could have been in that period of my life. Uh, the shapes, <laughs> yeah, the, the shapes, uh, as I said, uh, right at the beginning, um, they are spherical. I've also seen ovoid shapes, sometimes even triangular forms. Sometimes they give off um, an ultraviolet light. Yes, some kind of ultraviolet light. Then there are those that uh, I believe are not, uh, they're not the ones we can say, they're not the good ones. And it's always a dull, um, a dull white color. Yes, as if it were absorbed. Yes, as if it were absorbing light, but which doesn't emanate. However, it, it only captures light that comes to take and not out of nowhere. And I think I've explained myself, in, in short, to those who want to understand us and who are in the field. The strong lights, the bright ones, they put you in a kind of non-fear state of tranquility, where they even make you relentless, where you would never stop filming. Instead, when they are the lights, let's say, uh, the dull lights, um, those lights, I don't think they are good things. Sometimes I happen to see strange things. I grab my laser. I have special lasers, not those on the market. In short, quite good and powerful lasers. And the moment I aimed them, the objects moved, and some even shot off at high speed. So that's why I can't answer this question of yours, because I don't know if it's energy or if it's someone manipulating them. Perhaps it's more the second. I held Mayush to get up. I gave him my hand and holding his, we kept running away. But it was useless anyway, because that object was much faster than we were and after a few minutes, it got closer. It hung in the hair above us again and that moment something very, very strange happened. Something I have never been able to explain. I even tried to wake up the person next to me and he saw what I was saying. And I also tried to ask him, afterwards when we were on the ground, if he remembered what he had seen. But he had suppressed it at the time. And I think I also know why. A few months later, we had a strange accident. Where this yellow spider, as big as a hand, appeared on the dashboard of the car. And we were basically hit a tractor wheel. The car spun around and moments after the accident, he had suppressed the memory. So it gave me the impression that perhaps he was more sensitive to states of shock. Well, I remembered everything that I had seen. He blocked everything that caused him to be anxious. And we heard no more sounds, no movements of nature. We no longer heard the wind, we no longer heard the birds sing. No external movement, as if everything had stopped around us. Everything was really still, completely still. And I felt excluded from everything around us. As if someone had created a still image, capturing a frame of a film. Something like that. I can't describe it, but I felt very bad. A really bad feeling, and I remember that I was terrified by this feeling. I didn't know how to explain it, nor what would happen shortly thereafter. 
I don't know why, my daughter, who is the oldest uh, of all my children, uh, she got passionate about these things too. She even called me several times because I explained to her a little how it worked and she immediately fell in love with it. My daughter, Marilou, has also made some sightings. It's also happened that we had the same sighting at the same time. She was on a trip, travelling with her companions on the ring road in a bus. Perhaps it's just a coincidence, but I was going to Naples in my car, and I didn't even know where my daughter was. I mean, at what stage of her journey she was at, what time she was coming home. Um, I mean, I just knew she was on a field trip. And I had seen the same thing. A few minutes before, my daughter called me saying, uh, you know, Dad, I saw this. And I say, but you're telling me. And she says, yes. And how do you know? Because I saw the same thing. So, initially, I asked myself several things about this encounter. And I also asked myself, perhaps we have discovered things that they don't tell us about? After all, one person's knowledge can make the difference for many. I don't know anything about math, I don't know anything about physics. Even though as a child I was very passionate about both physics and astronomy, but this experience also made me doubt whether it was extraterrestrial things I was seeing. Because one's experience and knowledge can make the difference for many. And when a person finds himself seeing something in front of him that he doesn't know very much about, he often begins to doubt. He doubts his own eyes. It is right to doubt, because you ask yourself about things the brain elaborates what it's observing. This is fundamental. If doubt didn't exist, we would not discover 80, maybe 100% of the things we do and what we want to discover. And therefore it's fundamental in my opinion to question, because only in this way are new possibilities revealed. Some flying objects could also be land-based objects uh, built on our planet, uh, probably something that sometimes, um, in short, I, I search on the internet studying the articles of experts, and it would seem that some old Nazi projects are still ongoing and they probably still will be ongoing uh, in the future. And they had engineers, particular engineers. Then some say that they already had to deal with extraterrestrials. Some even say that they have bases on Mars and on the Moon. But we will never know the truth, because politics hides everything from us. And the Church likewise also hides everything from us. Shortly thereafter, um, we were immobilized, paralyzed. We couldn't move our legs, our hands, our heads. An invisible force held us still and we could only move our eyes. In vain, I tried to shout out to speak. It was totally impossible. After a while, I felt us being lifted up again together. Me and Marouche. And then nothing. I lost my memory. Our memories were erased. After several hours, we were released again on the field. But in another area, very close to Marouche's house. We saw Marushi's grandmother in the distance, hoeing the wild strawberries, which in the end I was unable to eat. And very frightened, with great difficulty, we ran towards her to tell her what happened. <laughs> From a distance, Marush was screaming, Grandma, 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 UFO, a UFO, there's a UFO, look at the sky, look up, there's a UFO over there. But I questioned whether that thing was alien and actually wondered if, later on, with the dreams I had, my brain was not simply just to re-elaborate what had happened. 
trying to place and attribute it in a certain sense to something that I am unaware of, that I don't know, something in fact alien. Usually we were used to closing the door, closing the bedroom door. And for some strange reason, I remember the open bedroom door within the dream instead. And when I, I saw this being, in that moment, the bedroom door was open, the door was open and I could see the room and a strange yellow light. But like a light that absorbed light, it was a very strange thing. It enveloped everything. It enveloped everything. At one point, a shadow started moving around the room. And it was a giant shadow. And at one point I saw a hand, a very, very large hand. Probably of a being of about two and a half meters tall. And perhaps even more. because I had a hard time showing me this hand. Because I perceived a sort of constriction inside the room. And this hand was exactly like the one in Michelangelo's fresco, the creation of Adam. With abductions, I couldn't explain anything to you because luckily I've never had any of these experiences and I hope I never will but lucid dreams, astral dreams, we cannot and I do not want to exclude them. But as far as my experience is concerned, let's not talk about dreams or anything. I've documented everything on video, so it's not like I dreamed it, or in the sense that I'll meet you tomorrow and say, you know I think this. No, it's not that I think so, I say so, and I affirm it with uh, documents in hand. His grandma was very angry because our disappearance had caused a lot of concern to our mothers, who almost called the police. They looked for us absolutely everywhere. They asked people on the street if they had seen two children, describing us. They asked acquaintances about us. but no one had seen us. All traces of us have been lost. And his grandmother, instead of looking towards the UFO, scolded us. She screamed at us angrily, really loudly. She threatened my friend that this evening, that is to say that evening, he would have been beaten by his parents. This being was practically pointing its finger, the only thing it had. It had four fingers instead of five, and it was completely green. From there, then I wondered if, in fact, it was not a reptilian. The only thing is that, during my research, it would actually seem that reptilians, in theory, would have a scaly appearance. However, in this case here, the appearance of this being's skin was quite smooth. The only thing is that he was pigmented, differently than us. He didn't have wrinkles, he was just different from us. He showed me his hand, almost as if it was an invitation, which I refused, and in that moment I screamed. The problem is, I was immobilized. I couldn't move, I couldn't wake up, I couldn't open my eyes. I felt like there was someone holding my head and I wanted to get away from everything. All that experience I was living in those 30 seconds. I couldn't do it, so I screamed really loud. And the person who was next to me tried to wake me up and calm me down. It's just that the moment I woke up, the door and everything I was seeing through the dream, they were exactly like I had left them inside the dream. It was as if it had a human behavior in a certain sense. One could feel the way I had lived it. 
I felt something tired, a being who is tired of going looking for someone. It was very human behavior. It dropped its hand as if it were saying to me, are you rejecting me too? In the end, we managed to attract his grandmother's attention, pointing out to her to the object that was always there, hovering above us as if it were there to make sure we were safe and that we were in his grandmother's hands. And when his grandmother got curious and saw the object, it, it took off with an incredible speed. Truly incredible. His grandmother, however, discredited that incident saying that was definitely wasn't a UFO, but a secret Russian military object. Given that nearby there were military bases. These encounter experiences, we can't put it this way, didn't just start a few years ago. Since I was born, quite strange things have actually happened in my family in the sense that when I was very little, I didn't live in a popular small town. In fact, I lived in a sort of cabin built by my grandfather in a locality that is currently considered as a place where miracles happen, which is the Madonna della Guardia on the outskirts of Genoa. And in this hilltop location, quite strange things actually happen and there are sightings, more precisely, lights. And one night, when I was little, in the cradle, my mother, in short, she told me a few months ago of the fact that my parents, my mother and my dad, had seen a very bright light enter the bedroom. But it wasn't just any light. The light was so strong that they could no longer distinguish the lines of the room where the two of them were sleeping. It was blue and it was shiny and had some kind of glitter inside, and they were scared. And they hid under the covers, so they didn't go and actually see what this thing could be. And my mum, for some strange reason, assumed that it was... it was some entity that had come to give me a soul, a spirit, if we could put it that way. I've questioned these things since I was a child because they didn't, that is, they seemed quite absurd to me. But it would all seem that there in the area and all, above all in the Genovese hinterland actually, these sightings would happen very frequently and very often people don't, people don't like to talk about these things because they are seen almost as visionaries. Their accounts can be questioned. But actually, even hearing from the neighbours, it seemed that frequently there are these sightings, in a nutshell, of these lights that wander in the woods and that can be seen above these hilly mountain locations. I don't know what these people want, these, well, not these people, these beings, but it would almost seem that they are sort of our guardians, okay? Guardians who check what the children are doing because they are messy children. They don't know in the slightest what they are doing and who, however, are fundamental in a certain sense for our testimony. Because I believe that we are here to testify on their behalf. We have to be here because they too have been put here in turn and this was my general impression. It is perhaps as important that we exist as our planet exists. It's 50-50. We can put it like this. I don't know if you understand what I mean. I believe, and in the meantime, I'll answer first why, in my opinion, they don't show themselves. Uh, they don't show themselves because we wouldn't hesitate to show them how good we are. 
aiming missiles, cannons and rockets and so on right away. I think they are much smarter than us and know us very well. Maybe they know us more uh, than we do. Um, that is, perhaps we, we don't know each other at all, or we pretend to, in, in, in short, to be good, but we are not at all good. I believe that if, for example, a military plane or a ship intercepted a UFO, they would really have no qualms about shooting it down. Uh, they just wouldn't. Even if I'm also convinced that they wouldn't be able to. I also believe and I think there are more good aliens than bad aliens, as I think there are aliens who are definitely less evil than us earthlings. And I'd swear on a bible to this. Yes, the next day I remembered everything perfectly. At school I told my classmates about this adventure or misadventure. And in the afternoon, I also drew a drawing of the object to show it to my parents. During these years, I've tried to deepen my knowledge on the subject, studying and becoming interested in the subject and in general. I've discovered and have seen that, however, from a research point of view, Many psychologists who have dedicated themselves to regressive hypnosis have discovered several interesting things regarding the field of dreams. Because through this regressive hy hypnosis, they have noticed that within some of the abductive subjects, we can put it this way, there are entities. Aliens that we do not know at a lucid level and the level of reality. During my research, I discovered that some of these aliens, I have even glimpsed them in dreams since I was a child. There is, for example, the story of this Russian truck driver who one night had a missing time experience. He was driving and suddenly following a sighting of some lights in the sky he found himself captured. He found himself inside a sort of spaceship where there was this black being who showed up and started talking to him. The thing I saw as a child was very similar in my dreams was very similar to the story of this man and the same entity, this black entity, shapeless and with these sorts of, if we can put it like this, of, of hair that I covered it. I found, I found it at the end of my path to get out of the house. For some strange reason, as a child, I kept having this nightmare where I tried to leave the house. The stairs moved, changed their position, and the apartment even rotated on itself, tipping over, and when I reached the end of this path, I found this being who often told me that there was no way to go back. And that it would have been better to lose the path rather than go back. In my opinion, it was a signal. It was a signal that I had to I had to stay away from what I knew because otherwise it would have limited me. It would have trapped me and I would not have been able to delve into what is the world, reality. The fact that although there are painful situations to face, it is good to be able to face these painful situations, difficult situations. Knowing the person next to you is the, still the best thing, whether the person is positive or negative. Therefore, there is no limit. We often set limits. We are afraid, and so what do we do? We put up barriers. We don't do anything else. Instead, it's right to tear down those barriers, because otherwise, we don't even know ourselves. Two or three years ago, I was on a beach in Mondragone. I was fishing in the evening and at night, because uh, my hobby is fishing and I noticed that there were flying objects over the sea 
because they were almost flying along the surface of the water. Uh, they were evident because they weren't stars, they were um, too big to be stars. So I decided to go and call my wife, even though it was late at night. My wife comes out and asks, what is it? Are you sure it's a UFO? Are you sure? Are you sure? She's rightly inexperienced, it's not like she's interested in these things. Anyway, while we were watching, I was pointing my finger and I say, look, and she looks, and it, it was moving slightly. And while I was saying this, I didn't even have time to pick up my phone. So we were in Mondragone, and the object flew in a, in a second and a half, literally a second and a half, more or less to Gaeta. And we're talking about a town that's about 50 kilometers away. All that I remember is that then I lost sight of it because I had to run after my wife because she got exaggeratedly frightened and jumped to her feet and started running to hide upstairs in the house because she got so scared but I was a little scared too to tell the truth because it really all happened uh, in a flash. What did I physically feel during this meeting? I, I don't know. I don't know, my memory was wiped. I, I can't remember anything. I don't know what was done to me. I, I, I hope it was nothing painful. There is another case, namely that of Pier Fortunato Zanfretta, where this man was in the company of some colleagues of his. They were travelling by car, he had a missing time experience, and then suddenly from the coast he found himself several kilometres away, in the Genovese hinterland, near his home. During this missing time, several things happened inside this spacecraft. The man tells precisely of the fact that he had this sort of first encounter and subsequently there were other encounters in which these dragos showed themselves. This kind of alien who left him an object. A very particular object, because it was a box. He never opened this box. He swore to these beings that he would never open it to see its contents. In recent years, as I have become more passionate on the, about these topics, I would have liked to intervene and understand what his vision was. Precisely on these meetings that he had experienced, to understand what the key points of these meetings are and exactly what happened. Because it seems to me that these encounters in any case give a sort of they have given me a sort of awakening, and I would also like to understand, in a certain sense, whether this person was able to experience this sensation, this thing. An awakening from the point of view of lucidity on what is happening around us. Of lucidity about what happens inside oneself. A sort of awakening in terms of understanding what the mechanics of a system are, and fully understanding in the end what isn't working. which is very natural, very human mechanisms, in the sense that each of us and all of us are caught up in some kind of frenzy, aren't we? And despite this, if we were united in, in a certain sense, we could take coordinates, clearer destinations, clearer for each of us. Instead, it's as if we're a part of that sort of en entropy that we don't know how to manage. Because we are confused in a certain sense. The direction at the end is more important than your, your closure. I don't know how to explain this. The outside is very important and is important as the inside and therefore one's direction is fundamental. Near Mondragone, uh, let's say behind the mountain, there's an abandoned NATO base. There are tunnels inside it that are a few kilometers, perhaps several kilometers long. There's still all the equipment inside, and to tell the truth, I mean, 
it's really scary to go inside it's it's almost spooky it seems like uh, something from another dimension something that's not within our reach it was made many years ago in short there are tunnels there are what i think are also railway tracks and lifts uh, all inside the mountain but many, many people do not know of its existence. You enter the tunnel and exit in another town, nearby but several kilometers away. Sometimes I get the impression that they visit us precisely because there's something they have to monitor, that they have to come to check on. They come to monitor us. It was a base, a secret base that no one could enter, and we never knew the truth. Why did this NATO base exist, which was active for so many years, and then decommissioned a few years ago? And often, I have to tell the truth, I have asked myself this question. I was a boy, and in a council house nearby, the windows caught fire. The windows and the clothes inside the trunks caught fire. The trunks were intact, and the charred clothes that had burned were inside them. I remember going there a couple of times to see this, and I remember it well, because it was an event that really got people talking. The first person I told about my experience was obviously my mum. And after I was found, she asked me for explanations to justify all those hours of my disappearance, of my absence. I told her everything. Obviously, she didn't believe me. She scolded me. I perceived them as having a correlation to something. Something that goes far beyond what is human. The human conception. Therefore, something much more similar to God than all the rest and therefore something that knows exactly how the whole universal system works. I don't know if these beings are gods or not. They seem to resemble something very big. If we may put it that way. Something that has a consciousness from the universal point of view. Unless we are not, as I told you some time ago, trapped in this dimension because it is the light that leads us to do so. The light of the stars and the light of the cosmos. It is as if we were materialized here. Because it is the light of the stars that leads us to do so. And space is nothing but a large SD memory where this light then generates our essence on a material level. A correlation between UFOs and miracles? Well, these people, in order to work miracles, means they certainly have something different from us. Otherwise, we could all work miracles, right? So I think there's probably something different and, and strange. I think there's a correlation. If we have said and we think that Jesus comes from above, Yes, but he doesn't come from who, uh, from whom they want us to believe. I think that there must be a correlation. If these beings showed themselves, I don't know, but if in short one day they could show themselves, in the meantime many would really understand where we really come from, because I think we are the fruits of aliens. I hope they can show themselves as soon as possible, Maybe they could fix a little the things that they broke on this earth, and they broke a lot of things. I don't believe that Jesus comes from an angel. Uh, I mean, I believe that Jesus exists and existed and he will still exist. But I believe that Jesus was created by other beings who are much better than us. Because this is the truth. We want to change the truth. They want to change it. But even those who don't practice what they preach know the truth very well. Let it be understood that I'm a very Catholic person, because I want to clarify this. I think we should try a little to decipher the Bible, 
to clean it up a little bit because I also think they've dirtied the Bible quite a lot and not everything that glitters in the church is gold. Not everything that glitters in the church is gold. Perhaps flying objects glitter more than what's in the church, the way I see it. In short, the problem of dreams eventually affects each of us because it is our subconscious, which most of the time indicates something to us. And sometimes they can be mistaken for kidnappings. But my theory is that there may be a connection between these. However, all people may not know that they have been kidnapped. In reality, they may have been kidnapped. And I add, only one thing. I strongly believe that these beings in the course of time, if they ever manifest in a, to a material way, the only real reason to want to do this thing is that we have to get out of here. In the sense that it could happen and we already see the causes through the, what we ourselves cause. We are the cause of our evils. And it could also happen that we reach a point of no return which in part has already arrived and it is not possible to fix it in reality, if not through thousands of years trying to create and enact temporary solutions to solve the problems we have caused. So these beings, in short, could only want to manifest themselves where there is and can be verified this point of no return in an official and general way when none of us could find themselves having the possibility of being able to save ourselves on our soil and on our planet. Following the statements from the witnesses made in this documentary, it is necessary to make a few clarifications. UFOs, or unidentified flying objects, are evidence, and the increase in sightings could be the actual signal that a technology exists. A technology that compared to the commonly known technology we are aware of is so advanced that we cannot understand how it works. Despite this, aliens are something else, and it is necessary to separate these two elements, because the first, UFOs, may not be necessarily connected to the second, Humans, themselves strangers to the environment that surrounds them, generation after generation, archive learned elements in their knowledge system, trying to make their approach towards matter, form and space more functional. Without forgetting that the capacity of the mind has very limited, as well as subjective, individual perception response times. The mind, given its sort of habit of spatial and material knowledge, when faced with such unexplainable episodes, could even go so far as to produce involuntary reactions, such as intrusive images and thoughts regarding individual incidents, even reaching automatic suppression about the events that one has lived. In addition to this, it is fair to say that the image of aliens could emerge from the eyewitnesses' suggestibility in their unconscious or subconscious. But if this is not the case, then aliens are already part of us. <laughs> 